Adjustments can be applied as an adjustment via the image menu or by using adjustment layers. All of the adjustments we've applied so far in this lecture have been applied non-destructively because we've been using adjustment layers. If you need to apply an adjustment via the image menu, it is best to do it as a smart object instead of a regular layer so that edit is also applied non-destructively. Applying edits to a smart object allows for future editing. You can always go back to the smart object and double click it to edit and make the to edit the adjustment and make changes. Right plus click a layer to choose convert to smart object to convert it to be a smart object before applying any edits. Once a layer has been converted to a smart object, you can now apply adjustments via the image menu without causing destructive edits to your image. There are many options as you can see in the image to the left. I will demonstrate a gradient map Steps for applying an adjustment as a smart filter. First, select a layer that has been converted to a smart object, then apply an adjustment via the image menu and adjustments. Notice the adjustment is now linked to the layer via a smart filter instead of an adjustment layer. Both options are now non-destructive. The edits you can see on this slide look identical because they are. The only difference between the yellow option and the green option are the way they were applied, destructively versus non-destructively. By simply making the original layer a smart object before applying the adjustment, it automatically becomes a non-destructive edit. One of the biggest benefits of using a smart object is the ability to go back and edit your adjustment at a later date. Double plus click the gradient map line on your layers panel to launch the gradient map dialog box to edit which gradient is being applied since in this example, I have applied a gradient map adjustment. Let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you how that works. So I just have the same images open that I have been using, so I'll just grab one. Uh, I'll do it a couple of times, so I'll do it to the, the glass image first. And so we have been talking about applying adjustment layers via, uh, or adjustments via adjustment layers because by default they're non-destructive. But there are a slew of options if you go to the edit menu or sorry, the image menu, and then choose adjustments. And you'll see all the options that we have on the layers panel and then some. And so if we want to, we can apply, I'll say a gradient map. And this is the same option that you can find on the layers panel. And I'll just leave it at whatever's there for now. And then I can select okay. And I can still create cool effects or I can use adjustments to fix problems and images. Um, but if I just use the image menu and choose adjustments, I can't go back and edit this. If I was editing for another hour and then decided that I don't like the purple and the pink and I want to have two different colors, there's no way for me to get back to it and say, oops, I didn't mean that, let me try it again. However, I'm going to do Command or Control Z if you're on a PC to undo. If you right click on the layer before you make the adjustment, and this applies for really anything that you're doing in Photoshop, you can right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. When you convert to Smart Object, your edits are stored inside the Smart Object and you can always go back and adjust them. And so if we try this again and we choose Image, Adjustments, and then Gradient Map, we can choose that same purple or pink color. It will apply a layer mask just like our adjustment layer, so I could modify it and only apply the adjustment to part of the image. And then also there's a line that says gradient map. And so if we decide later on that we don't like the purple and the pink, you can just double click this line. It will relaunch the gradient map dialog box. And now you can try different options. Like that one creates a crazy effect. I don't think that I like that one. But you can click through and you can choose different gradient maps to affect the image in different ways. There's these weird bubbles coming out. Let's go with that one. And then just like our adjustment layers, if that's too much, we can back off a little bit. Make sure you have a layer below or it's going to be transparent. You can also um, you can also edit it again and decide that you don't want as many colors and choose a gradient that doesn't have as many colors. Let's grab a different image and see how the gradient map applies to that. So I want the image with the windmill. There we go. So we'll get rid of our black and white adjustment layer. And we'll right click, control, um, click, and we can convert it to a smart object, go to the image menu, adjustments, and we'll try gradient map again. Uh, you can do different things here. You can try, oh, I don't like that one, but 
So I don't like it because it creates a negative. If you want to, you can edit your gradients and you can flip the direction they're going. For now, I'll just find one that I like that's a preset. Oh, I don't like that either. I'll go with that one. I kind of like that. But the benefit of this is now I can go back and I can modify the, the gradient. If you double click the word gradient map, you can change the color. You can reverse the colors. And so we didn't like the, let's hit okay here. We didn't like the original color fading to white because it looks like a negative. You can reverse it if you want to. You can change the colors that are being applied. Maybe you like red. And then the edit is still being applied non-destructively. Okay, that wraps up our lecture. So please make sure that you practice all that was covered. I highly encourage you to participate in skills practice activities. Um, some teachers make them optional. Some teachers make them required. So make sure you know what your teacher wants. Um, but either way, whether they're optional or required, they will help you. And so if you can do a really good job on your skills practice activities, it should make your assignments relatively easy to complete. And as always, if you have any questions, you can email me or your teacher uh, through the Canvas inbox.